Hello YouTube, Mystery Report Newsletter, and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is February 13th, 2022. It's a Sunday, and it is 12.04 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks, and it's been since last July since the Mystery Report's been made. This is the first newsletter for 2022. There will likely be a handful. And if a black star comes in May, there won't even be a handful of missed reports. My sincerest apologies. That uh, so much is going on, my head's about to spin off. And before we get started, let me give you a little update. You're going to get an update before the uh, Project Black Star supporters. And let me just flip over here. And, and pardon me, I am just just beyond tired. We've been working, especially. Uh, Gary and I, we've been working like crazy getting this solar panel system hooked up. This this could be the first half of it right here, 24 panels. And uh, yesterday, well, let me tell you, what, let me show you where we were. Digging a trench, digging a trench in Arkansas is something. The rocks, these rocks have been moved. Gary is uh, using a rake and sifting out the rocks and things like that. And just digging a trench like this, I mean, in Florida, this is super easy. In Arkansas, this is a major job. You can ask Gary. This is a look going towards the panels, and this is a look. Let me get, uh, this is a look going back to the power shed. This is the auger thing that we used to make the job a little easier. Sinking a series of holes. Took a lot of the work out of the work, but it was still quite a... Right, you can see it, get an idea of the rocks. And a lot of those have been th thrown over the fence. So this is, and then on the inside, two inch pipe right here. In case we want to add on another system, we want it, we want it kind of big. And then, uh, let's, let's see here. Out here on the outside, this is the first row panel. See the second row panels over here? This is what Michael came. God bless Michael. He came and uh, hooked up. See, all these are now hooked together in a series. These things, but they told me to be very careful because these things put out 400 watts per row of uh, 400 volts, I should say. And uh, so that energy goes through the pipe and into the batteries, into the inverter, and into the batteries that are in the shed, in the power shed. And let's see. Having a little bit of difficulty. So these are this is for the two rows. This is what Michael put on yesterday. It's, it's all wired up. We pulled the wires all the way through, and now my brother from another brother David. He I was just getting ready to start this update this video mystery report, and David knocks on my door, and he had to borrow some tools to do some things, putting things together. Is he's uh, he's going to finish up the system. The water witness part, the water system part is going last. The what's going first is the spirit witness part. All this power stuff. And my brother David, from another mother, he's uh he is the star of the show now, putting everything together. Michael's done his part, and now David's doing his part. Okay, so just want to give you a little update on uh, this is mine and Gary's work. Michael put together all these brackets and everything, and then he showed us how to put them together. And then uh, me and uh, me and uh, Gary put together this top row, and then I put together this bottom row by myself. These uh, twelve panels here into six pairs, and uh, we got this all this part all set. These posts right here, front row, second row. These are twelve foot posts going way up into the air to give us. And then to give us the uh, power from the sun. Pretty cool. And I did, I'm not showing you, but this hole is covered up. And God bless Israel and Eric for coming over. They've relocated here to the Ozarks and now close by, across the street from David, as a matter of fact. So now they come over and help too. They can help. We dug the hole, and, and Gary was, I know, really, really tired. Just about killed my brother Gary on the project, but it is coming along. And gradually, all the notifications for two thousand for uh, newsletters 
for Mystery Report and for Black Star. All those notifications were set in January, so now I'm getting gradually caught up. And I've intended on the last, I don't know, month of Sundays to get this report out to you. And just haven't been able to. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow. I'm going to do my best. But we worked until uh, pretty late last night. And um, I was inspired by an email that I got from a Black Star newsletter subscriber who had received the Mystery Explained. Everybody that subscribes, everybody that, that uh, makes purchases at Terrell03.com, you all are getting a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. So he's, he uh, apparently went through the m book, The Mystery Explained, and then he, he wanted to know if there was a version two. You know, what's next? He, like he, he was wanting more. And so my recommendation to him was subscribe to The Mystery Report. It's, uh, though there hasn't been a mystery report made since last July, but when you're brand new and you come in, then you get access to all the 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 newsletters, all the way from newsletter number one. And then, it's not that way with the Black Star Report. You don't get access all the way back to 2012. You get one year at a time. The mystery report, you go back to the beginning, and then the newsletter number one has a video attached to it. And... There's a breadcrumb trail laid down. Then you go to newsletter number two, newsletter number three. You'll have them all in the Dropbox folder. You start with one, and it's going to be the two Gospels of the New Testament. Then the two churches of the New Testament. The four baptisms of the New Testament. You're going to start off with the basics. And you're going to build upon that foundation. After the first six videos, the sixth one is how the, how to, uh, the mystery diagrams, how they work. Overlapping circles, Venn diagrams pretty much and then gradually I mean, you have a big gigantic wide paved breadcrumb trail laid down for you until you get to the most recent things become a little more complicated and then uh, the the objective is right here this newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit water and blood testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 1 through Revelation once you see the pattern, it is an exciting thing. It's amazing that God, you can see, when you begin seeing his wisdom, God has to choose you to see it. Many people, most people, are going to look at this, not going to get anything out of it. When you start seeing the three witness patterns, you can see them everywhere. You see, And once you see them in the scriptures, then you're able to see them in yourself. You're able to see them in other people. You're able to see them in the cosmos. And then you realize they're everywhere. It helps you to understand simple things that are very complicated can be made very simple. Like, why does the theory of relativity not reconcile with um, quantum physics? Why does the science of the small not, not coincide with science of the, of the large? And the, re the reason is because the universe is broken. That we are living in a water witness part. Relativity and quantum are not supposed to reconcile. They do reconcile in heaven. Where the blood witness testifies for the original singularity. So once you see these things. You have the mind of Christ. And you can see these things from a blood witness perspective. And you're going to realize that your soul. Testifies for the original singularity. Which is you. As a God. Having no spirit, no soul, no body. Because they're all the same thing. It's a, It's fantastic information once you can see it but most people can't see it and if you can see it on this side of the veil then god has chosen you to see it and it is a magnificent thing once you can greatly appreciate uh, gary and david and D david has probably seen it the longest for since about 2011 12 13 14 since we first became acquainted and the reason that I moved to this location where I'm at in the Ozarks is because he's only a couple miles away. And, uh, you know, for more than one reason. But uh, just imagine in the beginning, whenever these things, God was showing me these things, even from my youth, there was nobody else on, in the, on the earth to talk about it with. Nobody else could understand it. And so now that Gary sees it, I mean, David sees it, Gary sees it, and many of you guys seeing it, then at least there's some people around that can also see it and then we can begin having discussions and going into the deeper things 
So no, uh, the, uh, version 2 is not going to be made before the Black Star gets here. People just cannot fathom the mystery explained. 555 pages, 80 color-coded diagrams, they just can't. There aren't, nobody's going to be ready to go to the next level, which is the mystery explained has 20 chapters. It's laid out according to numerology. The 21st chapter is book 2. And that was planned, but then the realization dawned. You know, the... Uh, my book was published, it was written in 2004, 2005. It was published in 2017. And 100 books were purchased from the publisher. And right now, number 79 or 80, we're about to 79 or 80 sold since no, November 2017. So we're just not getting it. That's, it's, uh, it's God's stuff, and he's just really tight with this, with this information. So this is the first newsletter report. Oh, the, the other thing is whenever you subscribe, you're going to have access to these links. This right, these right here, John, uh, went back in time. I did a radio series at Awakened Radio, and there's 21 of them. And John went back, and he, he downloaded all of them, and then he removed non-essential information, edited and then put it together and he sent them to me and so those are available you see them right here 1 through 21 and then my plan was to have Bible chat to open a chat room and so there were five of those from you see from January 2020 to, 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 uh, to February 25th 2020 but you know what happened right after that during this period right here is when COVID was coming and that, that changed everything so we have uh, we're the peace and safety part. First Thessalonians five, start verse one. It's happening right now, and we could be taken. Black Star is supposed to be here May twenty fourth, two thousand and twenty two. We'll see if we have another orbit cycle under our belts, or if it's going to be this cycle. It's looking a whole lot like it's going to be this cycle, though. And we're to be taken just before the sudden destruction comes. We're taken in 1 Thessalonians 4, start at 13. 1 Thessalonians 5, start at 1. That's where the sudden destruction of the day of the Lord is beginning. Okay, so might want to pause this, get your coffee or whatever. This is going to be, this. there's more information in this newsletter, I think, than any other. And we're not going to be able to get through all of it and let this run a little more than an hour. So I want to get into this. And this is for Albert. He is a big-time supporter. Appreciate you very much, Albert. You haven't been writing me so much lately. My apologies that it's taken this amount of time. See, Albert received these answers back in July, 2021. And that's how long this has been sitting there. And I believe the numbers two, two more newsletters like this one have already been written last July and August. The time this has not, because of scurrying around, trying to prepare for what everything is going on, has, there's not, has not been time to be able to make to even though the reports are already written have not been had time to do this part to uh, finalize the newsletter and to make the video report so let me just get into this and there's a uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information in this newsletter for newsletter supporters and again you can subscribe stay right here just at the start then uh, just go down the website and I'm a little funny about showing anything on YouTube because you can say one thing and three months or two years later they come back and they want to shut your channel down because it's something you just you know that's the way that it is today so this is the mystery report tutor you want to send questions you're going to be writing to me for to a special email address set up for you as a supporter it's just fifty dollars per year it's going to stay for until the black star gets here this is going to stay the same and just to have access to the newsletters then it's just twenty five dollars per year one time per year so this is where you subscribe. You get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, right here. It'll be signed by me. It'll be numbered. I believe it's number 79 or 80. That's going out, right? The next person to order. And I'll get that to you. Tuesdays and Fridays are shipping days, as, as many of you guys know. So let's uh, dive right in here. So Albert is a researcher, like myself, really sharp fella. And he has just about seen it all. 
in the scriptural interpretation department. So he sent me, and I did manage to find, um, however I could not find it for some reason, my original emails. But I did find the files that you sent to me. And they are, have been downloaded. They're in a special folder. And this is the first one that you sent me out of four. And this is the note of explanation. These are the incorrect titles. You see, these are interpretations of what is shared in God's living word. So I'm going to quote from here and then give my answers. And this is something that is, is not common. This is not something that I prefer to do. Uh, critiquing other people's work. What I'd much rather is that you go through the mystery, explain, quote me, and send me your questions on my work. There are more than, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of denominations out there. God's word is, was made to be interpreted that many ways. But there's one truth. And you guys can decide who's sharing the truth. Choose your tutor wisely. Your tutors wisely. Moving through this period. So take everything that I say and put it through the, the, the test. Test everything that's said from everybody and then decide for yourself. That's what scripture says. There must be factions among us so that those that are approved may become evident among us. 1 Corinthians 1.19. It's 1 Corinthians 10.19. My apologies. Um, <clears throat> so that this is the source. You can see. I want to show you with the information where this all this came from. And then, see, we're going to start right down here. You see? This is what I uh, just took a snap, a screenshot, and put it right in here. So then I'm going to do what I'd really not prefer to do, but uh, Albert, big time supporter, and he's at, he's asking me the question, so I want to give him the answers in a few emails. But then my objective is to guide you toward the mystery explained, and then have you quote me, and then I'll give you more explanation on my clarifying statements is what I would rather provide rather than critiquing somebody else's work so um, thank you for writing your charts have been downloaded that's my reference the PDF that I just showed you saved in a special folder I'm watching the start of the video where black lady is giving instruction in her class as a rule I'm here to help those for whom Christ died see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight Using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. My book, The Mystery Explained, is the water witness helper. With God's living word being the spirit witness. So here's the diagram. That's what it looks like. God's word, spirit witness. Mystery Explained, water witness. This is your work that enlarges in between. So, for example, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit, blood, water. Heavens, heaven, and earth, spirit, blood, water. Your spirit, your soul, your body, spirit, blood, water. There's a pattern here. So this red booklet, that's what I have. The Lord God led me to get a big red booklet. In my book, The Mystery Explained, you see it's blue for a reason. God's word, spirit, water, blood. This is your work in between that can, if you continue the research and you continue working, this will become larger and this and this combined. Listing all the three witnesses, developing chapters under chapter headings, and whenever you see the charts, you see that there are charts and charts of three witness mystery sets throughout the Bible. Okay. So, um, your work is what grows in between. I'm not here to criticize or fix broken doctrine of others for thousands of denominations, as I said earlier. Um, but see that you insist on diverting, um, diverting steps to these tangent paths that in my estimation represents more of a distraction for you and me than anything else. You, are, uh, you also must promise not to be offended by a simple demonstration. I would like to respond to what appears to be a challenge made in one of your paragraphs. So if you, afterward, going through all I am sending you, please do show me. So this type of thing for intellectuals, um, my early um, ministry 
before there was any such thing as an internet. You know, we're talking going back into the 80s and into the 90s. Then uh, my ministry was through mail and writing scholars around the world and going back and forth and back and forth. And that's kind of what we're doing a little, little bit. It reminds me of what we were doing. So uh, going through all the charts and watching the entire video is not required to demonstrate broken doctrine. And the work of these people seemingly held up as spiritually enlightened. Let us begin at the beginning of the archetype, volume one PDF document, and quote from a note of explanation. Unfortunately, I have no way to cut and paste content. This document is not allowed. But this is what's said anyway. So this is their view of incorrect titles, and then this is the correct title. What they're saying is that God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, that God is the Father, the first person, Jesus Christ, the Son, is the second person, the Holy Ghost, is the third person. This is their version of the incorrect titles. And then the correct name, um, Yahweh, or Yahweh, to them is the Father. Elohim, which is God, is the Word, in their estimation. And then Yeshua, Yeshua is the Holy Spirit, in their estimation. So, now my commentary, none of these titles you see above are correct. Again, these people are clueless. Correct names are the Almighty, from Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, or God of Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Taken from the, he the Hebrew Elohim, God has three witnesses listed clearly in Revelation 1.8. And they are, and I did pull up the... Uh, Revelation 1 8. It's pretty simple. Most people read right through this and don't see it. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who, who is to come. The Almighty. Those are his three witnesses. God who is, that's the eagle, by the way. God who was, that's the bullock. And God who is to come, that's the lion in the uh, the types of revelation and that is the Almighty so many people believe that the Almighty God is the Father Son and the Holy Spirit the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit are three witnesses of the Word so my Father who art in heaven the scripture says in John 1 that heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain God so my Father who art in heaven is obviously not the Almighty He's the spirit witness of the Word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Spirit, Blood, Water, all testifying for God's living Word. There's uh, and there's plenty of plenty of diagrams that you're going to see throughout this presentation. Okay, so God who is spirit witness, prophet, lion. This is what I was just showing you. King, eagle. That's God who is. He, God who is sees all, everything in the universe, everything in heaven, everything in God's infinite realm that's happening at that moment. God to come sees everything in the future. God who was sees everything in the past. They only exist that way because God is interacting with the sons of men in real time, in time and space. But time and space is created. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Everything in the heaven, everything in the earth is created as a beginning, as an end. But God is infinite. So he interacts with the sons of men, having spirit, soul, and a body, through his word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God who is, is the speaker all the time. He's the speaker. When God who is must look into the future, he looks to God to come as his prophet. Because remember, God who is is always in the moment. Knowing everything that's happening. The future part is for the prophet. The past part, intercession part, is for the priest. That's who God who was is. Okay. These are three witnesses, not persons, testifying for the Almighty. Yahweh is a transliteration of YHVH. 
number 3068 first used in genesis 2 4 to distinguish the lord god the lamb of god jesus christ from god who worked six days of genesis 1 1 until resting in genesis 2 3 now the article below this is going to address that in depth so this is what was sent in the pdf by albert we are using this is that that organization they're using Yahweh or Yahweh as the correct name through though our research we have found that it is spelled both ways it's also so there's many different ways many different translations transliterations all meaning the same thing the true name of the father and that is absolutely not true that name right there for you and me if English is your first language is Lord. The Yahweh is the proper name of God of Israel. That there's so many misstatements in here. The Lord God of Genesis 2. The Lord God of Genesis 2 that created Adam and the garden is none other than the Lamb of God. And standing in the center of the throne, Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. The Lord God and the Lamb of God. The Lord God, the one that made Adam, right? He is the Lord of the Sabbath, the seventh day, everything created on the sixth, first, sixth, first, second, third. Well, first of all, the entire earth. See, this was a singularity, the earth in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God is one thing, a singularity, the Almighty. The Word is one thing, singularity, the Word. Earth is one thing, singularity. That's the incarnation of Adam, the earth. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was divided and then put back together again. The waters above the firmament, the waters below the firmament, and the firmament was called heaven, Genesis 1 8. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the same way. The Word, the Holy Spirit comes out of the side of the Word. The Father, the power from on high, overshadows that Holy Spirit to beget the Son of God, Luke 1 35. So this is the word, my Father who art in heaven, the Son, and the Holy See heaven, the word realm, this is heaven. My Father who art in heaven derives his name from heaven of Genesis 1.1. So there's a heaven here, which for me personally is the realm of the word. Because this is a created realm and this is a created realm. This is the realm of the word right here. This is... Where t then time and space is created right along with the Word and the heaven. Heaven and the Word is the same thing. And all things of John 1, 1 through 3, all things were created by Him and through Him and without Him was not anything made by God that was made. So you take Genesis 1 and you break it apart into its three tabernacles you get the first three verses of John, the Gospel of John, first chapter, first three verses. In the beginning was the Word, which is heaven. The Word was with God. See it in the circle? And the Word was God, because in God's infinite realm, right here, the infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. God asked His Word, He commissioned His Word to go and incarnate as heaven, so that God could again make Adam, the heavens, heaven, and earth, inside of him again. So God made Adam in the infinite realm. Satanic rebellion happened. He's dead. He has to be brought back to life again. How's that going to happen? Through heaven and earth. So in, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And if you read Ecclesiastes 1, let me go ahead and pull that up for you. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. What has been is that is what will be. And what has been done in the infinite realm, it is what will be done in the heaven and the earth. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one might say, see, this is new. It has already existed for ages. Because in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That earth created by God was perfect, mature, complete. Every host 
was perfect, mature, and complete. There were no angels. There were no men. There were no women. There was nobody born. Nobody died. They were all created perfect, and they remained perfect and mature throughout their duration until the earth became formless and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. So God recreated the death of Adam that happened in the infinite realm as a result of this tenant rebellion. He recreated all those conditions in the earth that was made void so that the reconstituted remains became the heavens, heaven, and earth, the spirit, soul, and body of one son of God, one son of God named Adam. So we're members of Adam's body. We're members of Adam's body in this realm. We're members of Christ's body in this realm. And we're members of God's body in this realm. Okay? So when you recognize that, like David did in the Psalms, 82.6, that you are gods and sons of the living God, Jesus Christ quotes David, John 10, start at 34, that you, isn't it written? He was claiming to be the son of God. And everybody was like wanting to throw stones at him. He says, why are you upset with me? Because, because I said I'm the son of God. And you're gods. Because we are gods. Created by God in the infinite realm, sons of the living God. Through his word. Heaven and earth are mere incarnations. That's what Christ is trying to, trying to say. So, the misrepresentation, what I'm showing you so far, my father art in heaven, this is the son and the Holy Spirit, three witnesses of heaven. So this is my Father who art in heaven. This is the Son of heaven. This is the Holy Spirit of heaven. See it? Heaven. That's what my Father gets his name. But you see how God hides his wisdom in plain sight? He gives you the part about my Father who art in heaven right here. But he doesn't call the Son, even though, if you go to John 1, was it John 1, 31? Let's go there just for a second. No, pardon me, that's John 3, 31. He who comes from above is above all. So let's look at the diagram again. He who comes from above is above all. So the speaker is speaking as the earth. He is speaking of the one that's from above. So let's look at that. He who comes from above is above all. The one who is only from the earth is of the earth. And he speaks of the earth. Who comes from above, from heaven, is above all. So, one of the speaker is the one that comes from the earth. The one that he's testifying for, because he's the witness, sent ahead of him. Malachi 3.1, right? So, he is speaking of the earth, and he's speaking of the one who comes from heaven. So, you can see the truth right in this diagram. John the Baptist, this is his soul, his spirit, his soul, his body. The Son of God from heaven, this is his spirit, this is his soul, this is his body. And God, this is his spirit, this is his soul, and this is his body. That's the way it works. And this is the spirit, this is the soul, and this is the body. So these are microcosms of the larger man of God. That is being restored as a God in God's infinite realm. That's what heaven and earth were created for. It's Humpty Dumpty story. Adam is Humpty Dumpty. And his members have all been laid waste. All the members of his body. Now, the members of Christ's body. And we are individually members of Christ. And we're individually members of one another. Romans 4, 5. Right here. Here were members of Adam's body, like I said earlier, and here were members of Christ's body here. First fruits. Those of us that are first fruits called by the gospel, we're already seated in these heavenly places. This is what the arrow is for. We're seated in the heavenly places in the kingdom of his beloved Son. Already, heavenly man, Christ Jesus is our intercessor. First Timothy two five. Between God and men. Christ Jesus. And then when you take this a little bit further then you're going to realize that this Christ Jesus right here 
is incarnate inside of every believer. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father dwells in your spirit. The Son dwells in your soul. Your body is the temple of, that's right, the Holy Spirit. All three witnesses are inside of you. And God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So we, the members of Christ's body, are walking, living tabernacles. Christ is tabernacling inside of us, the incarnation of heaven that contains this whole universe. And then incarnate inside of him, in us, is the Almighty. So wherever a son of God goes, the Almighty is looking right out of his soul and bearing witness and testifying to everything. So when you misuse the Son of God, you never want to do that. That's the big, biggest mistake that you can make. When you, mis when you misuse the Son of God, God's going to get you. And that's one of the reasons that Christ says to treat others the way you want to be treated. Because there is an incarnation of you inside of them, like there's an incarnation, incarnation of them inside of you as a God in this infinite realm right here. So when you do evil or bad to another, one of God's children... There's an incarnation of you inside of him that's going to pay for it. So spread blessings and help every single person that you can possibly in this life so that it will come back to you. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is, and this has become quite complicated, and if you're stuck on seeing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as the Almighty, because I have friends that, are, that have that trouble. And whenever I try to give this, this explanation to them v verbally without going and showing them Revelation 1.8 and Ecclesiastes and you know the proof that's in the Scriptures, then they begin to get back on their heels a little bit and go and wait a minute, because they've been praying to my Heavenly Father all this time. But my Heavenly Father is part, is part of the one intercessor Heavenly man, Christ Jesus, one mediator, intercessor, one mediator. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the pipe through whom you communicate to the Almighty. So our prayers are for those that are around us, those in our family, our friends, even our enemies, through Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praying to Jesus takes God Almighty out of the equation. So what these people are doing for Albert is helping him to recognize the three witnesses of the word as the Almighty, creating an idol out of something that is most certainly in heaven. So when you realize that my Father who art in heaven is in heaven, and the commandment says that you should not worship anything in heaven, you should realize that Heaven and the, even the highest heaven. See, this is heaven. Genesis 1.8. This is the highest heaven. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. And heaven and the highest heaven. 1 Kings 8.26. Heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain God. It's impossible. He's infinite. These are finite. These things are created. So God, he dwells inside of his son through, well... You can call it magic if you want. God bends this second veil around his throne. It's like a typewriter ribbon, if you've ever seen an old typewriter. And so the face of God is on that veil, and Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God right there, and standing before them are the two olive trees, Adam and Eve, testifying for the earth, the heavens and the earth, right from the beginning they're there right now and they'll be there to the ages of the ages testifying so they're olive trees when they walk around the earth they're candlesticks testifying in heaven that's uh first kings no not first kings zechariah chapter 4 start at verse 11 which is right here then i said to him who are these two olive trees to the right of the lampstand and on its left, and I responded to the, se the second time and said to him, Who are these olive trees, these olive branches, which are beside the two golden pipes, or the, two, uh, the candlesticks, which empty the golden oil from themselves? And he answered and said to me, Do you, not, you don't know who they are? He says, No, my Lord. He says, These are the two anointed ones who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. So think about who testifies about the Lord of the whole earth. And the first thing that he says, Behold, 
Elijah. He said, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand. So he's one of those two olive trees. You know who the other person is? Moses. The first is last, the last is first. So Jesus Christ, Moses, and Elijah in the Mount of Transfiguration. It's three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. If you go back to the, the garden, the Lord God, the Lamb of God, the incarnation of the Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. The creator of Adam, and then he pulled Eve out her side. So because Adam is just like the word, broken down into spirit, blood, and water. Adam, Eve, and her seed, just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's what he says. This is what he says. As the Lord, the God of Israel, is before whom I stand, there shall certainly be neither dew nor rain during these years except by my word. Now, you know who's talking right here? The cultivator of the land of the garden. Because that's the way it was in the garden. Adam and Eve. Adam had all the powers in Genesis 2-7. All the powers of the cultivator of the land. He, those powers were divided between Adam and Eve whenever Eve was taken from his side. And they were cast down onto the earth. So you take the powers of Elijah. And you take the powers of Moses. And you put them together. It becomes the cultivator of the land. Because Moses is the incarnation of our mother Eve. That's why members of her body are baptized into the body of Moses. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, start at verse 1. Look at all the water witness signs. Because signs, Moses is the water witness. Elijah is the spirit witness that comes first. And that Elijah, that's John the Baptist testifying as the earth. So there's a pattern to all these things. If you can see it, that God's chosen you to see it. Then you realize that the forerunner to Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist, he belongs in king's palaces, wearing king's clothing, soft clothing. He's a prophet who's more than a prophet. The only person that is greater than the prophet in the kingdom is who? The king. Because he is a king. Because he's David. And he's Abraham. The two witnesses, the two olive trees, they keep coming again and again and again and again. They're the two begottens, Adam and Eve, that have no belly button. Both created. So there's three begottens total. And they're all standing in Genesis. At the beginning. The Lamb of God, who's the Lord of God, Adam and Eve. And they're standing on the Mount of Transfiguration as the last. When you have Christ, the incarnation of the Lamb of God, the Lord God of the Old Testament. And you have Adam and Eve. I mean, you have... Elijah and Moses on either side. And this is what it looks like. This is one of the diagrams, one of the 80 diagrams from the Mystery Explained. And so you have the three witnesses, Peter, John, and James. You have the three witnesses, Moses, Moses, Christ, and Elijah. This is my beloved son. Spirit, blood, water. Because Adam, Eve, came out of the Lord God. Like the earth came out of heaven. They're one witness. So, for example, for another, to give you a little more, because that sounds confusing, doesn't it? Imagine what happens whenever this is Adam laying on his side on the altar, his spirit, his soul, his body. This is Christ laying on the altar, his spirit, his soul, his body. The objective is Humpty Dumpty. Take all of these men and all these angels and put them back together again flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Angels can't either. The angel and the man must be put back together again. So you take the woman, put her back inside the man. Take the man, put him back inside the angel, and you have a living soul in heaven. So all of the members of Adam's body to be restored, that means in time, eventually, there's no, more such, no, no such thing as men. There's no such thing as angels. They're all made into immortal souls again. In the Father realm, there's no such thing as archangels. There's no such things as members of the Holy Spirit. They are all reunited and they become one in the Son that enlarges to become the Word again. But whenever the water witness part and this blood witness part, the first Adam and the last Adam, when they become one, see that's a spirit, soul, body thing going up and down. The, 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 the uh, man of God that I showed you earlier. 
So whenever Adam is fixed, he's restored, all the members of his body made perfect, mature, complete, done. And the Lord God, who is Christ, and Adam, his son that he created in the garden, whenever he's completely restored, they walk together through this second realm, through this second veil, back into heaven. I mean, my apologies. Back into the infinite realms, labeled right there. So heaven and earth become the same thing. So who do you think is going to pop out on the other side into the infinite realm, all completely restored? It's going to be Adam. There's going to be no word. The word is already there. One with God in the infinite realm. The word has no reason to be or need to be restored of anything. He's here doing a work, helping Adam to be restored again. God created Adam through his word in the infinite realm the first time until he was sacrificed. He was created to be sacrificed. Isaiah 53 is all about Adam, the first and the last. So that he can be restored and sent back to the infinite realm. So two are going to walk in through that veil. One's going to come out on the other side. The first and the last Adam are going to become first and last. They're going to become the same thing. As strange as that sounds, remember that this is a created realm and this is a created realm. The heaven and the earth. Everything that's created has a beginning and, and has an end. And the whole thing is about the restoration of all things. The all things, the heaven, heaven, and earth. From John 1, 1 through 3. All things are going to be restored and go back to the infinite realm. All restored, fixed. From our perspective as gods in the infinite realm, the entire process that requires ages and ages and ages and ages takes place in the flash of a single instant. So this is like being in the matrix, and this is like being in the matrix of the matrix. Because these two realms are not even real. The only realm that's real is up here in the infinite realm. So these are some of the diagrams these are the diagrams that are in the mystery explained to help you to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight this is just one of the diagrams right here so these people are re replaced have replaced the Almighty the far left image with the Son of God that's basically what's going on here there is no way you can claim to agree with everything stated in the first 40 percent of the mystery explained and with the teaching of these people unless you misunderstand the doctrine of precepts teaching sound doctrine in my work and unsound doctrine in their work see because yahweh yahweh however you want to pronounce lord is the lord god of genesis 2 4 the lord of the sabbath the lamb of god who incarnated on this planet as jesus christ he is the god of israel because the Son was made to be God, Hebrews 1.8. God said, go down there and be God to Israel. And that's what he did. So Israel must go through the dispensation, the kingdom dispensation, obey the gospel of the kingdom to come to stand on the sea of glass so they can eventually join us in the Lamb. But the six-day people that are here, the ones from Genesis 1, 26-28, they have direct dispensation with God Almighty go and read it God tells them to do this so we approach God through his son Jesus Christ much of the world the six-day people they have direct relationship with God as they've been here for millions of years whether you realize it or not there's amphibious races reptilian races that have been here for long since before them they're custodians okay so this is came from their work, from that PDF that I shared with you. Also, we have used many different versions of the Bible, but in all the versions, we are using the correct name. No, you're not. Wherever we feel it is necessary, we have indicated which Bible we are using by the following abbreviations. Otherwise, you may assume that we have used the King James Version or the Holy Name Bible. My recommendation is that you use the if you if if you like King James, use the New King James Bible. And if you uh, that's going to be from the received text, and then what I and I use that first first decade of my ministry. Then after that, the switch was made to the New American Standard Bible. That's from the older Egyptian manuscripts, Byzantine. That includes the Byzantine manuscripts, and 
So the New American Standard, there are missing chapters and things like that. But uh, that's what I use. The Bible that's on my desk is a trans, uh, an interlinear Bible, the Greek interlinear Bible. So I use the Nelsons. And the, the uh, received text and the critical text are side by side. So you can see where the forks in the road are. And neither translation is much better than the other. There are copy errors in all of them. But when you see the three witnesses, God takes care of all that. I mean, in the old days, my job was to dissect and trisect the languages. Once Lord God showed me the three witnesses, that became unnecessary. Absolutely unnecessary. So here's just a little background on the received and the critical. And uh, th th about the received text, that's from the Antiochian manuscripts. And Paul's ministry was there in Antioch. And so Paul, whenever the close of Acts happened, about 61 AD, he was allowed to start writing about the mystery. Well, the last three verses of Romans, the Romans was written in 59 before the close of Acts. The last three verses were added. That's 25, verse, chapter 16, 25, 26, 27. Those verses were added later by the Apostle Paul to a circulating letter because he was no longer constrained by God from writing about the mystery. So that's why you see it in the prison epistles and things. But you don't find it in the Egyptian manuscripts because those manuscripts were taken to Egypt before the Antiochians manuscripts were updated. So that's why you have the big change in the manuscripts because of what Paul added. So this is a good example of, see this benediction section here, this does not appear. These, this, this last part here, this was added by Paul later to the Antiochian. So this is in the New King James Bible. And you see this Amen here? This Amen is removed from the critical text that incorporates this. But there are two Amens here. This was the end of the, this is grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. This is how the letter ended back in 59 when it was written. Paul added to it after the revelation of the mystery. God allowed him after the close of Acts. Whenever he, in 28, 28, when he says, now I'm going just to the Gentiles. Period. I'm not going to preach the kingdom anymore. And he didn't. After that period, but then God says, okay, now you can start writing about the mystery, which appears in the prison epistles. This is what the so then he adds this part that's right here. I'm now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel, which is the gospel of the grace of God. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest. And by the prophetic scriptures, and most people think this is the Old Testament script. This is the prophetic scriptures of the New Testament that are written in the Paul's day made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith to God. See, this is the God, this is God, the Almighty. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Word right here, made flesh, is testifying for them. The Almighty, God who is, God who was, God who is to come, is right here in the same verse. To God alone, Alone wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Through. Because everything we do, because we are seventh-day people, is, th is with God, our relationship is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way other than his word who is incarnate for the purpose so that we can have intercession and mediation. Okay, so this is just a little critique. And... Of this work, again, that's not my prep. That's not what I like to do. Is going and criticizing other people. You know, they can believe in whatever they want to believe. And uh, I would much rather you say, "Hey, on page this version that from your book, you said this, and please give me a clarifying statement on or more scripture support or something." So this is just a little background. I like the interlinear Bible. And so, and actually look at the prefix, prefixes and suffixes on the Greek. Makes things much more clear. So whenever you're using a translation, you're using 
the Strong's Concordance, whatever, you're only working with the root words. You're not dealing with the actual full Greek words with the, with the prefixes and suffixes. And if you really want to be get down to the nitty gritty, that's the way you're going to study God's, God's word. You're not going to say, oh, the King James Version only or the New American Standard only or the, the Antiochian manuscripts only. There's no such thing as that. You have to use a combination of all, the, all of it. Because nobody has it 100%. The, um, the, old, the manuscripts that we have, we have the original manuscripts, but they, there are differences in them for reasons. Most of the errors that are in the Bible are just simple copy errors from being copied and copied and copied and copied and copied over and over again. Not deliberate. Some places like First, uh, First John chapter 5, start at verse 6, there are four manuscripts that contain the bad translation about the Word and the Holy Spirit and blah, 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 blah. And many of the translations pick that up whenever it shouldn't be. Okay, so that's just, I mean, you saw how long the PDF was. and I only picked out a few small verses just to show you the crack in the foundation that renders the entire work, well, useless, if you ask me. Then uh, this is Albert again, my older and wiser spiritual brother. And uh, Albert was writing to me quite often. Not so much here lately, Albert, but, I mean, for obvious reasons. COVID has, has changed everything on the map and the way things look the black star could be here this cycle easily this cycle see the the signs of the war that's trying to take that's trying to start trying to be start a world war that's to get rid of the undesirables because the russians the chinese americans everybody the israelis they're going to the underground arc cities and undesirables are to be put into harm's way when the planet gets terraformed destruction comes suddenly their plan is to save humanity by emerging after and starting the New World Order. So they see the New World Order as the salvation of humanity. Because if they told every pardon me, if they told everybody what was happening, everybody would panic and everybody dies. So there's that's the method to their madness. So um to tarot. Blessings um in everything you seek with effort of everything you touch. I hope all is well with you. I listened to your June YouTube Mystery Report newsletter number four for Gary. And uh, June 27, 2021, a couple of weeks ago. It was very good. I enjoyed it very much. And had and have a lot of questions about the current evil age. That's Galatians 1.4. But that will take some time to uh, kind of write out. Then I hope we can talk by phone to make sense of the conversations from from uh, the answers from you and as many of you know I'm reluctant to to have telephone conversations that does happen sometimes um, but that gives me no record of what we have talked about so whenever you've written me and I highly encourage you to write to me at the email address for supporters not the website email address and then write under the appropriate subject so when you're writing to me about, you know, the three about Yahweh, or you're writing to me about the Almighty, or, or whatever the topic is, then put the topic right in there in the subject because every email you send to me is in our interactions, and so there's a pattern that will be in your subjects. It helps me to see where you where you are on the path, walking the path of life, the obstacles that you cannot see around helps me to see what you need to see, and then to share that with you. Whenever we try to do these things by the phone that I have to remember after answering hundreds of emails every day, right? It, it just it puts a big strain on me to be able to try to do something like that. And you're not going to have access. I'm not going to have access to all the information to be able to give you the answer that you're going to need unless everything is written down and I have access to that in my records. So, but... Some people are with the subscription program because it's only fifty dollars per year, right? The subscription program and twenty-five dollars per year that obviously cannot include hours and hours of telephone conversations with every subscriber because there's thousands of you. That's absolutely impossible. But when you write me emails, then I can answer, you know, this supporter, your next supporter, then get to your email and then go to the next one as time permits. It allows me to give each of you a thoughtful reply 
on what's going on. And now if I get up early in the morning or if I'm up late at night or whatever, whatever I'm doing with my schedule, I'm, then I'm, I can come in and get to that. Where if I'm on the phone and I tried this years ago, even with the, whenever there were just hundreds of you trying to do the, the telephone, I went up on the phone all day long and I cannot get anything done. So it makes it difficult. But a few of you, you, you send me donations and Albert, you're one of them, right? You're a monthly guy. You set that up and you send me every month your donation. And so, so you, whenever you get ready to be on the telephone, brother, then you, you've got my number. And if you don't have, have my number, send me your number and I will call you because you are special. You're a special supporter of the research. Just realize when we have our telephone conversations and many of you can glean just treasure troves of information by your questions, by just going back and forth for 15 minutes or 20 or 30 minutes. And so it's very valuable. So some of you guys do that as that you send a donation, say, okay, now I want to, I write you, I go, well, what do you want? Uh, this or that or my book or what do you want they go no i want a telephone conversation i want to talk to you so that does happen you know maybe five or six times a year so um Albert, you're welcome to you have my number then um just write me an email and say i would like to have a conference with you and then we'll set up a time that uh, that we can do that okay so you were paying attention to what i was writing to gary and gary is advanced and my brother from another brother david He's advanced too. You guys are advancing in your different kind of ways, but whenever you get together and start having your conversations, then, you know, the back and forth, I mean, it's really, really love it. My brothers, for whom Christ died, going back and forth about the principles and the doctrine, and you guys have, you, you're standing on firm footing. It's really, really a great thing. So, um, and I would really love to be able to get the chat rooms and things going again, and there's just not time. Just not time to do that right now. Now, possibly, Gary, if you have more time, you're over here helping me a lot. And you've got your own place. that you're. I don't know how you would ever have time to be able to do that. But if some of you can are interested in doing that, the Mystery Report people, the tutor program people, if you're interested in having a chat room every Tuesday night, Tuesday night works good because most of you are in church on Wednesdays, right? And if you go um, back in my day, I used to go three or four times a week. And Wednesday nights, right? And then Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. A lot of people do that. And so those are not the good days. Wednesday night is not a good day. And Sunday is not a good day because people are doing their own morning and evening church thing. So uh, Tuesday nights just seem to be the best night. So if you guys set something like, up, like that up and let me know, and it's possible and I can, then I can pop into your chat room whenever it's possible and then have some question and answers. And create more video for other mystery report subscribers okay do so you have a lot of questions about the evil age and uh, just uh, let's see but my god I was just rereading the online version of your book the mystery uh, your mystery book on the laptop while on chapter 15 the second reading through while seeing the US as the mystery blood bought body of Christ members being separated totally out first as the first gift to us via by faith in his gospel is amazing these are long sentences out and is going to confound most people's thinking well that's true god's wisdom is hidden in plain sight and he is very selective about who he lets see it but once he lets you see it and then he opens doors and generally he's only going to open the door so wide until you start helping other people you show them the simple things that you've learned, and then God opens the door a little wider. The light shines till it starts shining brightly on your face. And then when you testify to others, that brightness that's in your face, that glee that's in you like a little kid with a new toy, they can sense that. And then they're drawn to that. Like a bug to a light. That's the way that it is. So uh, what I found really, really, really amazing with was with a our mystery gathering perspective viewing of the b early and late rains bride gathering so if you've read my book you know what these things mean then d the destiny of the old testament saints then tied in with the first being the last and the last being first with the coming ages yet to come 
after and with the new heaven and new earth, comma, with David's throne on earth, the Lamb's throne above, and God's throne uh, within the uh, word realm. But then everything comes together and up the ladder, eventually into one body. Okay, so what I, I was talking about, this is a later diagram in the book, the new heaven and the new earth. And you saw a piece of that in the diagram I showed you earlier, but this is the the new heaven and the new earth. Remember, this is an almost infinite realm. God is seated in his son. The second veil is actually wrapped around him. He's still in the infinite realm, but the veil is wrapped around his throne. So it works. And so here you have the body of Moses. You can read about the body of Moses, Revelation 7, start at 14. Those that came out of the Great Tribulation. So this is in the new heaven and new earth. See, the new heaven and new earth. Remember, that's after Hades is, and death are thrown in the lake of fire. So the people that are born into the new earth, think about how they're going to go to heaven. How are they going to go to heaven? Nobody dies. Well, that's Jacob's ladder comes in. Jacob's ladder is going to be restored on the earth from Mount Moriah. The location that symbolizes Mount Moriah and the New Earth. And the Sea of Glass, where Peter, John, and James are up there making intercession for everyone in heaven. So as these men are ascending, this is they're serving David as a prophet or as a priest. He's the king. See the spirit, the blood, the water? And he's serving the kingdom that gets larger with each age. And after they serve and they mature... They're sent up Jacob's ladder. As the man part is sent up Jacob's ladder, his corresponding angel part is sent down, descending angels, onto the invisible sea of glass, testifying as the body of Elijah. Those that never see death over here. And then the body of Moses, all those baptized in the body of Moses, body on this side, and these guys, the angel, their angel half, they are reunited at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So a marriage supper of the Lamb includes one human host, one angel host, put back together again. They literally walk into the Lamb to become a member of the Lamb's body. The Lamb is the incarnation of Christ Jesus, this entire realm. So the way that they join us from the earth in Christ Jesus up here, this is where we are, is by the marriage supper of the Lamb. So they're coming to the same place that we're going to by God's grace, by obeying the gospel. We're inheriting all these things. They are getting them too, but they're getting them by works. God is using us as an example, as a pattern, to show the heavenly authorities, these heavenly authorities, that His grace is greater than the works of all men and all angels combined. His mercy, His grace. And that's what we have when we obey the gospel. When we're baptized into Christ's body on the cross. So that when He dies, we die with Him. The mystery of Christ. So He was in the earth three days. We were in the earth three days as members of His body. God raised Him from the dead. He raised us from the dead. Whenever He was seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we were seated right there with Him. Finished products. Boom. Done. Now everybody else on the earth for all the ages to come are going to join us in Christ Jesus. But well, we got there by God's grace. And by the time they join us in Christ Jesus, we're going to be gigantic. All kinds of rewards from every age. They're just going to be newcomers. They're going to have their chest plate, their, their heavenly ephod. It's going to be covered in rough cut stones that are greens and blues and earth tones. Ours are going to be shaped, well, for the mature members, like a cross. Red cross. And enshrined inside of golden stones golden red thus those are the colors that you want in your ephod and they turn they have the shape of the cross and once you realize it the shape of the cross what it really means that's the sign of adam and eve with eve laid sideways inside of adam when she was pulled out the side the stick the rib was taken out stood beside him that took the cross apart putting the cross back in her putting her back inside is the sign of the cross that's testifying for the original singularity, immortality. That's what it is. So God carried out the story of the cross 
to show us all the symbolism of all the things from the uh, the, the, the hyssop branch and the, the, the vinegar being lifted up, you know, the sour wine. Every single little thing means something in heaven. It's a great, great story, and there's great, great lessons in that. You have an opportunity to see it, and you begin by seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. It's really, really great once you see it. So this is from September the 17th. September. This is from July 17th, 2021. And I'm looking at my time, not going to be able to go through all this. So there's verses. Is that a diagram? No, that's a, yeah, that's a Bible verse right there mystery definition that's right there then uh this is hidden in the crag karen sent me this and this was written back to her this was back in february 28th 2021 give you an idea that's uh it's been a while since i'll be able to come here so just briefly um thank you for writing forgive me sister but you're hidden in the crag lady is drawing some incorrect conclusions i'm not sure about whether you know the lady um, but you can forward my comments to her if you wish. So she's writing now in Genesis 1. It says that God created man on the sixth day. Then again it says God created Adam. And a closer look to what happened on the sixth day. And so this is what many people believe. Is that Genesis 2 is a retelling of Genesis 1. And it is absolutely not the truth. Just read Genesis 1, and you'll see it's days 1 through 6. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Lord, the, the God Almighty is resting. Genesis 2, 4. The Lord God begins his work on the seventh day. Seventh day work versus six days of work. So God doesn't work on the sixth day. The Lord God, the, the Lord of the Sabbath, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Word made flesh, he works all the time on the seventh day. He is the high priest standing at the right hand of God right now. Making intercession for you and for me. He's been working a whole thing seventh day. But where do you think God rested? God rested in his son. 2 Corinthians 5. Start at verse 16. You'll get down to the part where it says. Let me just read it for you. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation see a lot of people go on about being born again born again john 3 christ hasn't died for anybody in john 3 yet he's only preaching the gospel of the kingdom we're not born again in the the anathan in the greek is from above christ is talking about being born from above even though Nicodemus is taking about it as being born again, talking about on earth and in heaven, we cannot be born again as members of Christ's body. We are a brand new thing. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, who's the word of God. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, and this is so important. This is what I was trying to get to. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Just like I was telling you earlier. We are tabernacles for Christ. Christ is incarnate inside of us. And God is incarnate inside of him. So whenever Jesus Christ was on the cross and dying for us, God was in him, reconciling the world to himself. God has been in the Lord God, the Lamb of God, Ever since Genesis 1, transition to Genesis 1, 2, when he rested, he rested in his son, reconciling the world to himself. So the work that Jesus Christ did in creating Adam began the consecration work. Because all the seed had to come out, her seed had to come out, so that the seed was mixed in Adam and Eve by the fruit, right? The good seed and the bad seed. So for and right now, and for all the ages to come, when a child is born, you don't know if you're getting an, an Abel, or you don't know if you're getting a Cain. 
the members of Christ's body's job as judges, we're going to judge the world and the angels. We have, we must judge the world and the angels. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3. But we must because the world and the angels, the men and the angels are the same thing. They're just two halves. One is in the heavens, one's in the earth because the universe is broken. There's not supposed to be angels. There's not supposed to be men, but there are because the creation is being restored. The way they're restored is put the man back inside the angel. Living soul. All the members of Adam's body get restored. All the members of Christ's body gets restored so that all the members of God's body in the infinite realm can be restored. And that's it. There is no other purpose for us to be here. It's for man to die once and then the judgment, blah, 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 for each age. Hebrews 9.27. That's what we're here for, judgment, because we are participants in this satanic rebellion, whether we wanted to be or not, as a victim or as a perpetrator. So the sons of disobedience, children of wrath, sons of darkness, like Judas, like Hillary Clinton, like Obama, like the Rothschilds, bad guys. Then we are the victims that they killed in the infinite realm. We're here to be restored. So what we should expect to happen now is that they're going to continue with their bioweapon. They're going to continue trying to kill us. And the dark, the darkness is going to fall. This dark winter is talking about that, that uh, Biden has been going on about. It's going to continue right up into the time that it gets the darkest. And then God intervenes, and turns the lights on everything. And everybody on the other side of the veil is going to be able to see the things that I've been telling you all along are true. God's going to stand up the faithful witnesses who testified and bring all these things to recollection and divvy out the rewards accordingly. And then you'll be able to see um, why I would much rather testify about the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water than to try and correct the broken doctrine of other of other people. There's no fruit in that. There's no reward in that. I don't really want to do that. They can believe whatever they want to believe. And you guys can too. By the time that but we get to the end here, and everybody's going to be able to see, three witnesses is the right way to go. So this is uh, going to become, I believe that Genesis 2 recapsulates Genesis 1. So that means you must ignore the truth. You must pretend it's the sixth day in Genesis 2 whenever God rested on the seventh day. And you just have to pretend that the Lord God is the same as God. A lot of people make those those mistakes. But again, you can. this is the red pill thing. If you want the red pill, happy to share it with you. Or you can wake, take the blue pill. Wake up in your bed, believe in whatever you want to believe. That, makes, that just makes me happy as pie. Either way, but we're not going to do this much longer, and then God's going to show us who's approved and who's not approved. So then this is another one to Gary's back in January 19th, 2021, on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. And so here we go with the diagrams again. And um, three tabernacles becoming one, Gary, December 26th, 2021. This one is more recent. Three tabernacles becoming one. Let's commentary. Whatever you do, make sure you get your food. They're going to try to starve you out of your house and put you in a FEMA camp. Though the objective is to still be around whenever the sudden destruction comes. We're taken just before that. Poof! There's going to be a rapture of the righteous and there's going to be a rapture of the wicked according to the mystery of iniquity. Things are not going to happen as the elite think they are. Everything's going to change in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be preparing physically to the best of God-given ability for what's coming. Spiritually to the best of God-given ability, given ability for what's coming. And then God's going to sort everything out on the other side. So the uh, not even going to say the word about the updates and other things that are in this. I want to keep this strictly as close as I can. I gave you an update on my preps. Hope you guys are prepping too. To show you that I'm preparing physically to the best of my God-given ability and helping you guys to prepare physically too. And then spiritually at the same time. Appreciate your support very, very much. My apologies again for taking so much time. And it may be some time 
before I'm able to do this again. It'll likely be on another Sunday when I'm supposed to be resting. But uh, for those that want more, there's, a, there's just a ton of information already available to you when you subscribe to the mystery report at tarot03.com. And it's only $25 per year. So you can go through all the information to the Dropbox um, information. Start with Newsletter 1 and just go right on down. You go back to 2012 and start with um, my radio presentation. Go to the next one, the next one, the next one. There's a big, gigantic, long paper trail. So you have access to tons and hours and hours and hours of information for just subscribing to the um, Mystery Report program there at Terrell03.com. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right over here at tarot03.com and I will see and please share this video with others let's try to help them as many people as possible to see the God's wisdom hidden in plain sight really really great stuff appreciate your support again get more information here at tarot03.com and I'll see you on the next mystery report 